When you meditate, you close your eyes and you watch your breath. So take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths and see how that feels. Where do you feel the sensation of the breathing? Let your attention settle right there and allow the breath to be comfortable. You might experiment for a bit to try longer breathing or shorter breathing, faster or slower, deeper or more shallow, heavier or lighter. See what kind of breathing feels best for the body right now. The reason we do this is to give the mind a place to settle down in the present moment. If you want to know your mind, you have to watch it in the present moment. And the breath is a good anchor to keep you in the present. When you're with the breath, you know you're in the present moment. Because you can't watch your future breaths and you can't watch your past breaths. It's just the present breath right now. If you catch your mind wandering off, okay, it's a sign it's beginning to go away someplace else. So bring it right back. And allow it to be here with a sense of well-being. You're creating good qualities in the mind, qualities like mindfulness, the ability to keep something in mind, and alertness, knowing what's going on. And then you stick with it. This quality of stick with it requires that you make a determination, or as we say in English, a vow to yourself. You're going to stay right here. As with any vows, you have to think about what you're doing and how to do it well. There are four principles for a good vow. One is that you use your discernment. You make good vows vows that are worth keeping, that will lead you to happiness. And you have to think about how you're actually going to get there. For example, when you're going to be living together, there are four qualities that the Buddha said will really help to make the, the relationship last. One is that you're generous with each other. Whatever you have, you share. And this is not just material things, but it also you share your time, you share your forgiveness. This is really important. Forgiveness should, should be the easiest thing to give, and yet often it's so hard. But you realize that if you carry resentments around with you, that's going to weigh down your own mind. And so you readily forgive the other side, because after all, you do a lot of things that need being forgiven as well. So you share your time, your forgiveness, you share what knowledge you have, what abilities you have. And this way the relationship is going to last. That's the first principle. The second principle is that you use kind words. Whatever comes up, and there's always going to be a possibility for disagreement, because after all, they say when you, like your teeth and your tongue. The tongue is the part of the body that gets bitten most often because it's closest to the teeth. So when you live close together, there's going to be difficulties. But when you use kind words to discuss these things, in other words, not only say kind things, but also think, okay, when I'm speaking about this, are there other people around? Is this going to embarrass the other person? Is the other person ready to listen to this? Show them some consideration for the other person as they found that the thing that kills a relationship more than anything else is contempt. You don't want to ever have any contempt at all. You want to think of the other person's well-being, how they're going to feel about things, and then you speak accordingly. The third principle is that when you help one another, it really is genuine help. It's not just help for the show or making a show of making help. I mean, you think, what does this person really need? What can I do to help? And then the fourth quality is keeping your mind still and at peace. Difficulties are going to come up, but always remind yourself, you can take it, you can take it. Whatever comes up, there's a way out, there's a way to solve the problem. And you've got the energy and you've got the skills you need inside in order to deal with the problems. And, and so be, con be consistent in your help of the other person. Don't be one way in front, of the others, in front of the other person's face and another way behind the person's back. Try to show some consistency in the relationship. These are the four qualities that make sure that the relationship lasts. So this is an aspect of discernment, figuring out how can we make this vow last. And then you're true to that. That's the second main quality for the making a vow. Once you've used your discernment, then you are true to what needs to be done. And that means also giving up certain things or lesser happinesses that you're going to have to give up for the sake of your greater happiness. Well, always keep that in mind, keep that balance in mind, that the greater happiness has to come first. And then finally, that quality of peacefulness, again, like learning how to still your mind when things get difficult, to remind yourself that you can, no matter how difficult things are, there's a way to manage, there's a way to make sure you don't have to suffer. And this gives you the strength to keep on going. So in the face of the ups and downs, the mind is steady and constant. It's this quality of constancy that keeps things alive, keeps relationships alive, keeps our human society alive. So try to develop these four qualities, discernment, truthfulness, 
the ability to give up things that you know are going to get in the way of your greater good, and this quality of steadiness in the mind. Any kind of vow you take, make sure it has these four qualities, and that vow is sure to succeed. <laughs>